and welcome to the Nokia Networks for AI Learning series. My name is Clayton Wager, and I'm part of our network infrastructure group dedicated to AI and high performance computing applications. This is a series of short, informal technical talks, each organized around a subject or theme that allows you to develop your knowledge around AI networking, learn at your own pace, and dig into the areas that are important to you. Whether you're just getting started learning about AI networking or whether you have done some research already, we hope that these episodes will be valuable and we look forward to your feedback on the content of these episodes as well as suggestions that you might have for topics we can cover in the future. Thanks for watching. So we're going to talk about AI technology itself because it's critically important to know how models are developed and used in order to define the underlying network requirements that we have when we design and build networks for AI. So everything in AI revolves around a model. And certainly you've heard about uh, probably the most famous of the models called GPT from OpenAI. There are other models. Uh, Meta has a model called Llama. There is a model from Anthropic called Claude. Each of these are example of a large language model designed to generate text-based output for us to consume and read. Uh, there are other types of models, of course. Midjourney is a model that produces images. Sora is a model that produces videos. But in general, the idea is the same. There's this concept of a model. So what is it? Well, at its most simple form, it's a file or a set of files that you can download. You can run models anywhere from your phone all the way through large GPU infrastructure on your laptop, depending upon the kind of performance that you need. But the model has two key attributes, the first of which is the model architecture. So this is basically describes how the data is laid out inside of the model, these large files. And there's the parameters inside of a model. That's the data itself. So between the architecture and the parameters, this tells us how we need to interact with the model to get the output that we want. Now, we don't interact with the model directly. We have to have an interface to it. And that interface is called an agent. And an agent, for example, ChatGPT is the agent for GPT from OpenAI. Uh, you have seen in Microsoft, they have the uh, Copilot product. So Copilot is the agent, and it most often uses GPT as the model. So there's a many-to-many -many relationship that we can have between agents and models. Uh, not only that, but an agent doesn't just simply interface with the model. It can interface, for example, with other data like your documents, uh, an agent could go out and do a web search on your behalf and synthesize and process that data. An agent could even talk to another agent in a workflow style format. So a great example of this is, uh, as I record this, Apple is about to come out with iOS 18, which has AI features. And there are a number of different small agents inside of iOS which perform functions. Things like grammar correction, uh, image processing, depth perception for small objects, depth perception for large objects and stringing those agents together to perform very high quality tasks is a key part of agent technology. So what makes these different AI companies uh, highly competitive? It's really the special sauce around how their agent performs and how well it can do the job, and as well as the, uh, the quality of the model itself and the data that lives in the model. So uh, when we develop a model, as you may be familiar with, that is called training a model. And training a model is one of the most highly uh, proprietary special sauce pieces of this whole equation. Uh, in order to train a model, uh, especially a large language model with a lot of domain uh, information, you have to have a tremendous amount of data that goes into it. And so these companies are uh, looking to gather data anywhere they can, proprietary data, data that they generate called synthetic data, in order to have the best high quality, most high quality model uh, possible. And of course, the parameters and the, the tuning that they do in the model is, uh, is also the, the domain of tremendous amount of science right now, research and development. That's where the advances in AI technology, we see those advances over time, is through the, the good efforts of the developers and scientists and researchers that are developing these models. So training a model is the process of bringing it into being. Uh, it requires a tremendous amount of compute infrastructure for the largest models. Sometimes those are called AI factories. Um, Elon Musk, of course, just announced Colossus, which is the 100,000 GPU cluster for XAI in Memphis. Um, the AI factory, I like to think of it as an AI hospital where the babies are born. Uh, the idea is that we're bringing a lot of this data together and we're bringing the model into existence. And they're co-developing agents along with that that can best serve that model. 
So when we're using the model, the agent, uh, when we have a, a, an agent that we're interfacing with and actually generating the responses, that is called inference. And inference is another important mode of uh, AI technology. So what we will see in future episodes is that training and inference actually are two different modalities of AI networking. We, we have different concerns when we have a training infrastructure versus an inference infrastructure.